first inkling I had that there was something going on that wasn't right was when a, a plainclothes police officer who was in the detail of uh, protecting the speaker goes up and whispers in her ear and all of a sudden she's whisked off. She's, she was at the front presiding. And uh, so, you know, we're all kind of going, well, that's odd. Why is she leaving all of a sudden? She was scheduled to be there for the, 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 all of the proceedings. A um, minute or two later, they do the same thing to the majority leader and the majority whip. And right around that time, I have a colleague of mine sitting by me, and he hands me his phone, and he said, take a look. And it, was, um, it showed people storming the Capitol. And I just said, when did this happen? And he said, this is live television. And so it wasn't too long after that that uh, we start hearing noises um, outside. And uh, leadership of the Capitol Police went up to the microphone in front of all of us and said, the Capitol's been breached. Be prepared to get on the ground. And so I immediately looked down and realized, you know, I'm tall. I'm five feet nine. And I thought, where in the heck am I going to hide from anybody who's going to come onto the House floor? And there, I mean, there was nowhere. You, I, you know, I'm way too tall to, to go underneath any of the seats. Um, so I, you start thinking about, okay, what am I going to do if they actually break in? Uh, it was shortly after that that then the um, leadership of the police said, uh, go under your, grab under your seat. There's a gas mask there. Grab that and be prepared to put that on. And, you know, so I, I think the feeling is that at that point we were sitting ducks. You know, I mean, you have this crowd outside that you start hearing that's getting louder and louder and louder. And... Um, it seemed like a little while, I don't know exactly the timeline, but where uh, the Capitol Police un under armed guard escorted us off. There was a lot of commotion and took us to a safe room. Some of us, like I ended up in the cafeteria um, that literally the, <laughs> the only thing protecting anybody in the cafeteria from the outside world is a glass wall. So it was very, those of us who ended up there by mistake, we said, you know, this is not going to keep us safe. If, and we were right by an outside door. And um, so then we, there were people who were in communication with the, the police that told us where we needed to go at that point. So we were escorted then to what was ended up being the safe room for the next many hours until the Capitol Police, who were fighting for their own lives to protect us, finally... Um, got the crazed mob out of the Capitol. And, you know, I, I, I guess if there's, a bright, if there's a bright moment from that day, it was that um, when the Speaker of the House came back into that room and said, we're going to go back in session, and we are going to do the work that we need to do to preserve this democracy. And so we went back in session, and when we had to walk back, it was a crime scene. I mean, you literally had the, the yellow tape all around, broken glass all around. Um, the police officers, and that by that time, the National Guard finally had arrived. It was three hours and 11 minutes into this that, that President Trump finally told the people that were uh, trying to uh, take over our government, told them to go home. Three hours and 11 minutes it took him. And... Um, but there were police officers who were just exhausted, who were lying on the floor. Um, the National Guard members in uniform were wandering the halls of the Capitol. Um, it was, you know, it was just really heartbreaking to see what these angry people did to, you know, really a shrine of democracy. Uh, to have to walk by all of that to go back into session. We we did, we finished it about four o'clock that morning, and. Um, and actually, my flight home was one of the worst experiences of my life as well. You know, I'm flying home. I, I took the first flight out. I could not wait to get home. I was like, I just want to be out of here. I want to be with my family. And um, um, so the flight was from D.C. to Chicago. We have no direct flights, whether you're going to Peoria or Rockford or the Quad Cities. You don't, we don't have any direct flights. So I had to fly to O'Hare to, to then fly home. But there was a, there was a rally. Um, all those people that were literally trying to take over our government, trying to hang Mike Pence and kill the Speaker of the House and take 
you know, me and or my colleagues hostage or kidnap or whatever they had in mind to, to take over the government, um, had a rally, you know, 30,000 feet in the air, probably somewhere above Ohio, I'm guessing we were. And you know, this woman stands up one row in front of me, tells everybody to take off their mask, that nobody could force us to wear our masks, uh, that when they got home, this fight couldn't end, and that for everybody to take over the, their county Republican parties, just like the communists have taken over the Democratic Party, they started to harass a woman that was uh, one row over to my right and up. They started to harass her, called her a commie, called her a baby killer, that she smothered babies. The people in the back started um, arguing and fighting. So when we landed, the police, we had to sit in our seats. The police had to come on and escort the guy, a guy in the back who was fighting. And then when we got off, there was a fight in the, in the airport and police had to be called. I mean, you know, th these, are, these are people, like literally everybody, the, the average everyday people just wanted to get home or they wanted to go to their workplace or they, you know, wherever they were trying to go in this, for these people who invaded the Capitol to think that they could have a rally in the, in, in the middle of an airplane where nobody had any, couldn't go anywhere, is that, that is what happened on January 6th.